What's up, folks? Chris with Cross CNC and CNC for newbies here, uh, coming at you with another installment of the Rotary Axis uh, statuettes. From uh, the statuettes were provided by Vitali, uh, the 3D model modeler from 3D Wave. Um, the the programs that I'm using are going to be Aspire. Uh, for the rotary G code generator, and I'm using UCCNC for the actual G code processing on the machine. Um, the machine that we're using is the CNC for newbies 4896 automatic tool changer um, with the rotary setup. And I already showed you guys how to set up a rotary table on your machine and square it up and stuff like that. So, uh, Wade, what's up? How are you? Um, without further ado, we're gonna hop into this. Let's uh, go ahead and hit that pre presentation, share screen. Um, let's see, yeah, there we go. All right, share that screen. Let's get this bumped up. There we go. All right. We'll turn we'll turn that off. There we go. Okay, so you guys got me. You got my Aspire on there. Um, you guys have uh, a good visual of where I'm going with this statuette. Um, I do have... Uh, some tabs built off of it, and I'm going to show you guys how to incorporate those into your holding so that your model doesn't go flying off and uh, everything like that. So this is kind of where we're going for the end result. Uh, you will notice that there's a smaller tab here, a little bit bigger tab here. And we're going to go over that here in just a second. So let me close this. And I'm going to open up a new window of Aspire. All right. Uh, now we go to present, share screen. OK, we're back. All right, so in Aspire, um, I am using Aspire 11.010. Um, I do have the upgrade 11.5. I just haven't installed it yet. All right, so I have a um, two inch by two inch uh, ash wood block and I glued a uh, one and a quarter inch dowel onto the end of it. Uh, the wood block itself, the ash wood block is 12 inches long. Um, and then the stick out wood block, uh, the glue block is what we call it, is um, three and an eighth inch long. So we're a little over, a little over 15 inches. Um, total and uh, we're going to kind of modify the the stock and the size of the pucks and everything like that uh, as I go along here. So, all right, let's do this. So job setup is gonna be in rotary my length is going to be seven inches long. My statuette's actually going to be seven inches long. Um, my diameter of wood is going to be two inches. Um, the cylinder surface is the zero position for right now. Um, the cylinder axis can also be used. That's what I'll switch over to um, whenever I actually go to process my code and stuff. Um, but this is really how simple it is to do a rotary job import. Okay, so we go here, 
just like with a regular 3D model, let's look here. We've got our bounding box, our sweeps, layers, a zero plane, um, you know, everything set up there. So, oh, I don't need to create. I need to actually open. And I'm going to open up Mary. It's going to take a second because this is a pretty big statuette. It's in millimeters instead of inches uh, on the import. Tick tock, tick tock. Here we go. All right. So we want a full 3D model. Um, I'm going to have it on this setup. Everything's good there. The units are in inches. And right now it's 83.3181 inches uh, diameter. So my wood block is a max of two inches. So now that changed my um, model size to a little over six inches long. All right, I can go here. This is the unwrapped view of what the model looks like. So you can see that. Um, if I click on that, like I did, and I go here, you could see that my model total is 6.0532 um, and 6.3398. So it's a, it's a little over six inches long and uh, the circumference is gonna be 6.3398. Uh, for those of you that don't know how to do circumference, um, if you need to find the circumference of something, you just take two times pi times the radius of your diameter, uh, your given diameter. Um, so in our case, it would be two times pi, which is 3.14159 um, times by one, because our block diameter is two inches. Um, the block diameter being two inches, our radius would be half of that, which would be one. So it would be two times 3.14159 times one. And that's how you come up with your circumference. Okay. Um, that gets us pretty darn close to what we need and we can go from there. All right. So as you can see, neither one of these are merged planes. They're, they're individuals. And this is what we have right now. If we started cutting uh, doing the roughing pass and the um, finish pass, our tool is going to come up here, down. It's going to go all the way to the center. It's going to clear this and go all the way down to the center. Okay. Uh, that may work for some, some designs, uh, being a short model and uh, not having very much hangout. Uh, you could get away with that for our setup. It's a little bit longer and it will not allow for that. So what I like to do, you could do this two ways. I like to add tabs off the back of the model. Um, one way you can do that, if you just need a, uh, a continuous tab all the way through, you can go to the zero plane. You open up the wrench and you can actually increase the base height of the zero plane. And that'll give you a rod all the way through. And, uh, oh, hold on one second, guys. I have an important meeting.
All right, guys, sorry about that. That was concerning our Ford Flex that is still in Pennsylvania, and we've been running round and round with it. All right. Um, okay, so the, the zero plane uh, increase will actually give you an increased amount along the zero plane. And remember, this is a radius because it is wrapped around. So right now, we're at just under an eighth of an inch all the way through. So we'll have about an eighth inch of, of wood still remaining to hold this in place. Um, I already know I'm going to have to do some work on the uh, top area of Mary's uh, uh, head cover. So I'm not too worried about all that. Um, if I wanted to, I could increase this up a little bit. If we did a 0.1, and that increases the zero plane there, and it's straight through the whole way of our block, which is, is beneficial at times. Um, then there are times where it's not necessarily beneficial because it might, those, those stick outs might obstruct the, the design of one certain part in that area. So you actually have to go through and create your own standoffs or your own pyramid shapes or, or anything like that. Um, so the way that I go about doing the second holding method um, is I actually go in, I make Mary and the zero plane a merged setup. I go to drawing, I go to 2D view, I take my rectangle, I draw in a rectangle. Um, that looks pretty good right now. We'll close. Um, and then I'll take this and did that increase the model thickness? No, it does not increase the model thickness. It allows everything weight asked. Uh, it allows everything to merge together on the size that it is right now. Um, and then I'll show you some stuff here in a second whenever we start working up around the uh, headdress area. Um, so I'll go to model. I'm going to create a component. We're going to have a merged component. Um, we're going to have a zero base height. Start new component, close. Okay, there's nothing there on this bottom end. And the reason there's nothing there is if I select it, I haven't given it any height. So right now it's basically a minuscule spot right at the center of the model. So the easy way to do that is if I do 0.25, which is a quarter inch radius, Look at that. I now have a, a half inch dowel that finishes off that bottom section. Okay. Um, I can also drop this down to uh, one, two, five. There's quarter inch. Okay. So that's actually... Um, a really nice feature and it's only held on down here at the back. So if you choose to do this way and you don't have any, um, any parts that are going to, uh, obstruct, if you have enough material and you don't have any parts that are going to obstruct, you can use this method, uh, really, really, 
easily. Um, in my case, uh, I have a one and a quarter inch uh, dowel rod glued onto the end of the material. And uh, that gives me my clearance so that my Z axis will not collide with the front face of my rotary axis or the jaws as it moves around. Okay. So for me, if I wanted to replicate what was there on that, that dowel rod, I could easily take this uh, 0.125, change it to 0.625. Now I have an inch and a quarter uh, holder. Okay. And so now whenever I do my roughing pass, this is going to come through and cut that piece back and then I'll actually make a bounding box around the base of, of the design and right up around the, the headdress of the design. And I'll use that as my finishing pass so that it doesn't go around these areas. Okay. Just so, just so you're fully aware of what's going on. Um, in my case, I'm just going to take this down. Let's do, um, let's do 0.25. That gives me a half inch material back here. Okay. Um, we're going to close this. And now I'm basically going to control C, control V. I'm going to move another one right up top here and once i do that if i go here look at what that does to the headrest okay now this one is still a half inch so it's going to uh really impede i'm gonna have to do a lot of hand chisel work here as i uh as I carve this and cut that piece off, I'm going to have to do a lot of hand chisel work to get it um, to pop off and then clean up. So what I can do is I can select this component and I can reduce that to 0.125. And now look at it. So now this way, I have a different diameter down here, a different diameter up here. And that's, that's how I do it um, instead of using the zero plane. If I was doing like a corbel or something of that nature um, for, for uh, like the top of a, a stair, um, pillar or something like that, or some type of decorative uh, accoutrement in the corner, um, I would probably just increase the zero plane height to give me my straight through. Um, and then from there, I would, I would work with it. Um, this way, I can actually do two different sizes. And you'll see it's not really connected uh right back here which it's going to cut into that and it might cause some issues so what i'll do is i'll take this and i'll just increase it down a little bit and now it's merged into her uh head wrap area And we'll take a look here right under this area. That's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of cleanup, to say the least. Um, I'm going to have to use a small hand chisel. I'll probably use a jeweler's hammer, tap the tap the hand chisel or tap the uh, hammer chisel. And then I'll come back in with a, a small hand chisel 
and just pick at it. And then I'll finish it up with some sandpaper. Um, and that's probably the way that I'll go with it. Uh, just because. So let's, let's see what we get if we decrease that. You could see it just pulled it in off of that, that ridge there. Um, that ridge isn't going to cut uh, the, the backside. Uh, it'll just kind of blend right into the head wrap there, which I don't have a problem with anyways. So um, at this point, I'm actually ready to generate my code for this. So I'll do a close. I'm going to go over. And uh, actually, one thing I'm going to do, I am going to take all of this. I'm going to hold the shift key, select all of these, and I'm going to bake them as a selection. And now I have my design all in one piece. Notice these were separate pieces. Once I baked them, they all baked down into one piece. Or if you're used to like uh, um, Photoshop, Illustrator, or like um, Paint, something like that, those you can flatten an image. Uh, that's basically what I did here. I just took all the levels, flattened them down into one, one level. Okay go over. I'm going to rough this out. Um, I will rough it with a quarter inch ball nose. Um, we could do material boundary for the first one. Um, I'm going to give, uh, I'll give 20 thousandths. Um, Z level is fine. No profile level by level. Roster angle is 90 degrees. Uh, let's put that at zero degrees. And that's what my setup will look like. So as it machines out, that's what you're going to end up with. Okay. Um, Sidewinder drums. Could you tilt the model so the tab joins at a spot that will be easier to fix by hand. Yeah, Rob, I can, um, you know, uh, that that's something I didn't want to get too far into it yet. I do have a video project planned for that, um, here in a little bit. And then, uh, I can, I can work on that part of it, but I wanted to kind of show how I'm getting this stuff first, because this is already going to be a little bit of a long video. Um, so Rob from Sidewinder Drums uh, is on on the YouTube channel. Thank you very much. All right. So now I'll go in here. Uh, I am going to use a half a millimeter radius, um, two flute quarter inch tapered ball nose end mill. Um, I will do Let's see here. Actually, I'm going to cancel out of this because I know what I want to do. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to go to drawing and I'm going to draw a vector right around this. That should be pretty good. Um, we'll close that. And the reason why I did this is, um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use this vector as my boundary box for the finish pass. And the reason being, I don't want to waste all my time back here or up here because it's not needed.
Okay. I'll get right up there. That's going to be cut and sanded anyways. Same up here, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, finish pass. Let's take that down just a wee little bit. All right. So now I have a vector going around that. Uh, Rob, no problem. I'll get to that video. I might do that on the, on the Jesus statue video. Um, so follow along if, if you want. Um, all right, back to this. So we've got our tool selected up here. Uh, I am going to go to selected vector. I'm going to select that vector. I have no offset. I'm going to do roster. Um, I'm going to go zero. I'm going to calculate. And this is going to take a good bit uh, for calculating. Oh, Cody, what's up, man? Cody, uh, Cody CNC engraving is up there. Um, hey, Chris, I'm on the production floor at work. Saw saw that you're live, so thought I'd tune in while I'm running machines. This is great stuff. Thanks for sharing. Man, Cody, not a problem. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Uh, Bull says, dope, man. You know, that's that's what we do. Uh, Bull and, and uh, you know, a couple of the other guys are out there. Uh, they got, they got a really good community going on. They're building a really good community, um, doing a lot of really good work behind the scenes that you guys, you're, you're not aware of or ready for. I can tell you that. Um, but you know, we'll see, we'll see what all happens and, and go from there. All right. It's still calculating this because remember, it's taking what the step over is, um, and then it's also converting that into a rotary uh, file. So this this does take a little bit more than your typical 3D stuff, uh, especially if you're using such a small tool like I am. Not that I'm a tool; I'm using one. <laughs> My neck doesn't want to work. All right, here we go. Russ, how are you doing this evening? Russ is joining joining us on the Facebook page. Um, let's see here. Wade says, to me, that view doesn't tell me much. Uh, that view is not going to tell you much. It's, uh, it's going to go through and everywhere where the quarter inch fits, it's going to cut. And everywhere where it doesn't, it's not. So... This view is the tell them all. As you can see, the finish on this is going to go right up to here. And it's going to clear it out. Okay. Now, the one thing I'm worried about is there is an extra line there. So I'll take care of that whenever I write my code for myself. Uh, uh, Russ, there's really, you're, you can view right from Facebook. Wade, uh, give, me, give me a minute and I'll have you 
squared away with the rest of it so you can really see it. So once we close that out, um, I basically can, I can select both my tool pads. And the reason why I can select both of them is because um, I have a ATC. Let's post process it for this one. Uh, and then uh, what we used was the Mach 2.3 wrap in X. Um, I did not, I did not, uh, oh, I don't want to wrap in X. I want to wrap in Y. There we go. Um, I did not uh, write a post processor for this this uh, setup in a, a Spire yet. Um, I'll work on that, but right now I get really good results with the Mach 2.3. Um, you know, it just it is what it is. Okay, so we go to Save Toolpaths, say New. Saving. Let's go to UCCNC. And we'll demo this and see. Uh, do you need to hold the piece from both ends? If you had a three jaw chuck, could you just hold from one end? I, I personally don't wade. Um, it really depends on the length of wood sticking out um, and the design of your part. Um, I try to support mine on both ends and I have to have a really long stick out because um, I have my rotary table mounted to my spoil board and it can interact with the function of my, um, my gantry and my Z plate. So I have to take all that stuff into account whenever I create my, my code. All right. So let's see here if, uh, if I can get this to share. Let's do a screen share on this. Okay, here's my, here's my uh, UCCNC. Let's go here to load file, desktop, new. All right. And that's going to be what we're looking at. So it is cutting in X just like we want. It's wrapped around the Y. Okay. Um, and we want the tool moving on the on the gantry axis, uh, left to right. So your X will be moving left to right and go from there. Uh, in my case, I have a legacy, so I would mount that, mount with a plate and then put the point end on the dowel and on the head, I think. You could you could do that. You could do it a, a couple different ways, Wade. Um, I always like to support my projects front and back uh, with anything sticking out more than like three inches. Um, that's just me. That's something I do. I've, I've done for a long time and uh, I just like it. So take it for what it's worth. You can, you have a, 
you have a uh, good rotary unit put on your machine uh, that it was built with it. Um, you know, a lot of the a lot of the other machines being a hobby type machine don't have um, a, a rotary axis built into it specific for specific use. Um, you know, we've got uh, we've got our rotary. Avid has a rotary. Um, JTEC has a rotary. Um, you can you can put a generic rotary on uh, X Carve. Millwright has a rotary and stuff like that. So uh, it's really individual case by case and project by project. But as you guys can see, this is how we go from uh, a quick model design import to code to uh, G Code Sender. So with that being said, guys, I think this one is going to be wrapped up. So if you've got any questions, go ahead and post. Um, I'll be on if, if I don't get any questions, I'll, I'll hop off. Yes, more people would have that style. Yes, uh, Wade was, was commenting on how many people have more of like a, a add-on rotary that you actually use uh, kind of a generic rotary setup and add it to the machine as an afterthought, whereas the legacies actually have a channel built into them, into their uh, steel frame structure to support, I think, uh, 11 inches. I think, I think it does an 11 inch round log or it might be case by case. Um, I'm, I'm not positive. I've only ever worked with two legacy machines um, and both of them had the trough built in with the rotary um, and it was covered by the spoil board. Uh, so take that for what it's worth. <laughs> um, Wade says, good info. Well, I'm glad that you found it useful. Um, if any of you guys find this useful, don't hesitate to give a like, subscribe on the YouTube channel. Um, you know, I really like bringing you guys this stuff. Uh, it feels good to be back in the saddle. As you guys can see, uh, it's a little dark in the house, but I'm not wearing any sunshades. So, uh, starting to, starting to feel, um, you know, somewhat like a human being, um, your rotary is 52 inches long. Wade says his rotary is 52 inches long and 11 inch diameter. So as you can tell, that's a pretty hefty setup. Um, the legacy machines are a full welded steel frame, which, you know, is great, but you also pay that in the shipping and, and set up and everything like that. But, you know, it is, it is what it is. Uh, Wade says, I'm looking good. Thank you, but I'm married. Um, you can't take me out to dinner. Nothing like that. <laughs> no, thank you very much, Wade. Uh, I know you've been following along for a while. feels good uh, to have some of the trials and tribulations somewhat behind me. So I actually have a, a follow-up doctor's appointment and another procedure coming. The... Uh, the 10th. So yeah, yeah. Like it. Um, all right, guys, I think that pretty much will wrap it up. I got a few people watching, um, no questions coming in. So I'm going to call this a wrap and I'll catch you on the flip side later. <laughs>